Okay, boys and girls, today we're taking a look at my favorite three Leatherman multi-tools. Now, I feel like I talked about Leatherman multi-tools on this channel a lot, but I really don't, and I don't really cover them, so today I'm going to be talking about the three that I enjoy the most and carry uh, the most as well. So these aren't necessarily going to be statistics or on paper the best multi-tools. Some of these might be a little bit more expensive per, you know, tool, uh, or they might just be older tools, but these are the three Leathermans that I personally enjoy the most. So without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content made here in the truck or outdoors. Uh, okay, so the first one, the number one for me has to be the Charge Plus. Now I have multiple Charge Pluses, which might surprise some people because they are a little bit expensive, but I really do like them. They come in multiple different versions from titanium handle scales to G10 handle scales to just standard aluminum handles, handle scales. And essentially the Charge Plus has the same exact tool set as the Leatherman Wave series of multi-tools. The only uh, kind of difference is that it usually has more premium uh, kind of features. So the blade is made out of sorry, this blade here is made out of a higher quality steel and you get things like G10 or titanium or aluminum handle scale. So it's just kind of slightly more expensive uh, kind of materials, obviously a more expensive price. They're also slightly smaller than a wave. I don't have a wave here to compare, but a wave is more in the neighborhood, though slightly smaller than the Surge, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but it's more in that kind of size range, whereas the Charge is just a bit smaller. So this is more of a kind of EDC friendly uh, multi-tool, but still also a very capable tool outdoors. You have your saw, you have your main blade, of course, this one being S30V, you also have your uh, full serrated with a seatbelt cutter, and you have some, you know, uh, good tools on the inside. So you have scissors, you have obviously your pliers, and um, you have your screwdriver, and so, so on and so forth. So I won't bore you guys with the tool set, but the Charge Plus in any of its variances, whether it's the titanium G10 or the standard aluminum, is my favorite Leatherman out there, and it has been for a number of years. Uh, it's just a really solid tool, very hard to beat. Of course, I would recommend anyone looking at this tool, definitely look at the G10 model, just because they scallop the handles, and it's very comfortable, and very uh, there's a good amount of traction to this handle unlike a lot of other Leatherman tools that kind of feel slick in the hand. So definitely my favorite multi-tool from them and is a really solid multi-tool as a whole. Now moving over to my next favorite and this has to be on the list because this was really, this wasn't my first Leatherman but this was I think my second Leatherman and just the Leatherman that has stuck with me throughout the times. It's my favorite one as far as wilderness goes and it's just an awesome tool. Once again I also have multiple of these surges but uh, the Leatherman Surge is a fantastic tool. Now it's definitely the biggest multi-tool in Leatherman's lineup as far as kind of traditional multi-tools go, but it also is the most feature rich. Now this one is a generation one, so it still has the micro screwdriver that was abandoned in later generations, but um, overall, and it also, it does not have the removable bits here, but it is basically the same tool and is a very awesome, very fantastic tool, especially for the wilderness. Uh, many people will mention primarily it's uh, good wilderness abilities are through the fact that you have this kind of bit exchanger so you can put larger saw bits or larger saws you can put files you can put a lot of different things in here and not only that because this is a more standardized t-shank kind of design back here you can make uh, or retrofit different tools to fit this and people certainly have so uh, it's a very cool feature in fact i really wish that this t-shank design would be on more of leatherman's tools this is the only one that features it but uh, it is a really cool tool and like I said, it allows you to have a lot of versatility of course you still have your standard you know uh, main blade and serrated blade and another cool nice perk about the surge is you have a full-on uh, scissor here so that is a very nice feature but overall this tool is if you're looking for a really supremely good outdoor tool and you're willing to pay the price because these are not super cheap uh, this is definitely the best bang for your buck uh, and i would say it rivals anything that victorinox puts out anything that any other company puts out 
Once again, uh, no one really can quite compete with the Surge. So it is definitely on the list and is a solid number two, maybe sometimes even a number one. Okay, so the last one is the original PST-1, or just PST, or Pocket Survival Tool. Now, I understand that the PST is not going to win any awards for high-quality materials like S30V or G10. It's not the largest. It doesn't have the most features. Uh, but the PST is just such a small, such a useful little plier and multi-tool itself. So if I'm looking to run something like a multi-tool that has a good set of pliers on it and a good main blade that's where I really like the PST because it's so small and not so much in size because it's actually the same length as the charge but it's so much thinner this thing I can't emphasize enough unless you actually have a PST just how tiny this thing is when it's folded down and how easily you can just throw it in a pocket and totally forget about the tool's existence and so it's a very basic tool it's once again not very feature rich but if you're looking for a minimal tool that gives you pliers gives you a main blade gives you some screwdrivers a uh, file you know, just general kind of generic tools that you'd probably use more in an EDC situation than anything. Uh, the PST is a really good choice for that. And so uh, many people are going to overlook it and say, oh, that's just an outdated Leatherman. But uh, I think there's still a lot of good use in this, so long as you understand what the tool set is and uh, it's functional for you. Obviously, if you are needing, you know, the bit exchanger, that is present on a lot of modern multi-tool or modern Leathermans, this is not going to have that. You know, if you're looking for scissors, this is not going to have that. So it does lack some things that I do personally like, but in a lot of ways it is still a very capable tool. And once again, you can't argue with how thin and how small this tool is and how easy it is to just slip it into a pocket or slip it somewhere and just totally forget that you even have it until, oh wait, I need pliers pull them out, and then bang, you got them. So that is the Leatherman PST. The other thing that I like about the PST is outside of the anniversary models that Leatherman brought back this year, if you get an original, an OG PST, they're not terribly expensive. Uh, the, this one ran me under 50 bucks, and a lot of PSTs, so long as you kind of look for them, you can certainly pay more. But uh, if you look kind of cautiously or thoroughly on eBay, you can often find PSTs going going for 39 40 bucks and get yourself one that's in very good condition. This one here was in that kind of uh, category where you can kind of probably see that, you know, the handles here are a little bit scratched up, but outside of that, things like the main blade, perfect factory edge, and uh, on the inside of this tool, it's just as good as it was from the factory. So, you know, if you can take a little bit of scratching up on the exterior uh, for a good interior, then uh, it's, it's a really solid tool. So that is the Leatherman PST, and that's why it makes third place in the top three Leathermans. Okay, guys, those are my top three Leatherman picks. Hopefully that last one surprised you guys. I know it's a little bit unorthodox or a little bit different. I think a lot of people expect me to be whipping out brand new tools. But honestly, I like a lot more of Leatherman's older tools than I do their new tools. Not to say that I didn't like this G10 model for the Charge Plus, but a lot of the uh, new Leathermans like the Bond uh, just really don't, don't do it for me. They're not really uh, that appealing so I'm honestly going back buying some of the more original Leathermans because I find them more enticing than the newer Leathermans. Anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always God bless and I'm out.